on them and this is going we're going to add all of these now they've got some stems on them. you can peel these off if you want in the end it won't make any difference I've tried it both ways seems like stems aren't going to be tasty by the time everything else is in there you won't know the difference so we're going to cook these quite a while until they start to really start to really get dark at the same time in another pan we're going to toast the cumin, cinnamon, cloves, all those. We're going to toast those for a few minutes. Just actually about one minute in a hot pan. Just to get them, just to get the oils liberated out of them just a little bit here. Been a few more minutes now, and these are getting pretty dark. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the raisins in. I'm going to start cooking those until they swell up. The heat right now is on the medium, medium high. You're going to try to keep the, the sides of the peppers that are not blackened down so that we get some even, even cooking on all sides. Meanwhile, over here, almonds have got some black spots on them. Sesame seeds are starting to toast smoky a little bit that's good we're gonna set these aside we're gonna use them in just a few minutes no more heat for them now these have gotten quite brown and there's a lovely aroma that's developed here that unfortunately I have no way of sharing with you but when you get it right you'll know this this smell now to this we're gonna cool it off a little bit start cooking the tomatoes sauce I've got 120 grams of tomato sauce here. We're going to cook this until it's reduced down quite a bit. Now, after this starts to thicken up and come together, we're going to add our garlic in. And some lime juice. Reducing the heat to medium, we're going to let this cook down just a little bit more. Now the spices, not the nuts, but the spices that we toasted earlier go into the spice grinder. Might have to break the cinnamon stick up in half in order to get it to fit. We're going to pulverize those into powder. Okay. It's been cooking for another few minutes. This is very thick, very thick, pasty like consistency. This is what you want. Still on a medium heat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in um, chicken stock. And those ground spices. And a few pieces of a few pieces of bread. Then we're going to add in cocoa powder. Bitter sweet. This is not sweetened. There's no sugar in this at all. We're going to add the sugar separately. 
and here's the sugar dark dark brown sugar and this is packed tablespoon also notice that when I say tablespoon I mean an actual measuring tablespoon not the kind of spoon you would, you would actually use to, to eat soup from on your table a real tablespoon okay we're gonna heat this up so it gets warm but we don't need to bring it to a boil because the next step is going to be we're going to puree it. Now, we also we need to add those nuts back into it and the ses toasted sesame seeds. It all goes together. So what we're going to do is get that chicken stock warm. It doesn't have to be boiling but it needs to be warm. It's getting close. It's, there's some steam coming off it. We'll give it just a couple more minutes on heat here. We also forget we need you know, that teaspoon and a half of salt for this. And after you blended that, I washed out the uh, the pot that this was cooking in earlier, rinsed it out. Now this goes back into the same pot. We're going to continue simmering it away, simmering away. I'm going to continue cooking this for about 20 minutes on a medium heat. Try to get, obviously, try to get all of it out that you can. No point in throwing it away if you went to all that work in making it. <coughs> you do want to put a lid on this because it will splatter all over the place. Um, I put it on with just a crack open. And after about 20 minutes, um, it's going to be very thick, very thick. You also need to stir it during this time so that it doesn't end up burning at the bottom because it is so thick. Even though I'm using a Teflon pan here, it will stick and burn because this, the sauce is that thick. I'm going to thin it out with a little bit of water here. And then it will be ready for use. You can simmer your pork or chicken. So as you can see, I'm using a, a fairly fatty cut of pork. I'm going to sprinkle it with some salt and some dried cumin. All the seasoning it's going to get and it's going to go into a very hot pan. A little bit, just a little bit of oil to start it out. Most of the fat is going to come off of the pork because it's fatty cut. We'll do it in a couple of batches because we don't want to overcrowd the pan. If you overcrowd the pan, the meat steams instead of browning. That's not what we want. We want nice brown pieces. These are cut fairly large. And as you can see, we're not looking for a super dark, crusty brown like we are in some dishes, especially Italian food. We just want a nice golden brown on this. It's mostly going to be braised. And when you've transferred the left of the brown to pork out of the pan. We're going to add a little bit of the mole into the pan that the pork was cooked in to deglaze it. Not really a Mexican technique, but it works well. Gets a little bit extra flavor in there. Then we're going to put it into a ceramic dish, all the lightly browned pieces of pork, and of course the rest of the mole. and stir the whole shebang together before we start braising it in the oven. This is where if you put the liquid smoke in as I suggested hopefully it's already in there but you don't want to add it to the top of this. And it's all together. Give it a good stir. Distribute the pork pieces evenly. That's fine. I'm going to put a lid on it and begin the braise. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.